Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We have very few interior walls to frame, so I don't have a whole lot of footage, but I just want to run you through the basics for how I like to lay out walls. Again, this isn't the right way, it's not the wrong way, it's just the way I like to do it. So first of all, you'll notice that I'm laying out directly the plates directly over the lines on the subfloor. We've taken all the time to make sure that they are square and parallel, so I can just simply scribe. You'll also notice that I'm cutting three two by fours on edge with the Makita 10 and a quarter inch beam saw. Now the reason I like to do this is because I don't overlap or underlap top plates. Over the years training people, too much time gets wasted when somebody does an overlap wrong or an underlap wrong and then you gotta rip plates off in the air. So a long time ago, I think maybe 2005 or six, we just stopped overlapping and underlapping. Okay, I'm gonna come back to that toward the end of this and I'll show you how we connect our walls. I know it seems heretical to do it this way, but in fact, let's come back to it. So, okay, I cut the plates directly to the line. Now what I'm doing with the layout stick is I'm marking my studs. Now an easy way to line up your studs is just to find a seam on the floor. That's a joist. Just scribe that up and over the plates and then 16 inches on center either way or two foot. Now we frame two foot on center because 16 on center is not generally needed structurally. So we try to save lumber where we can. Again, I know that seems heretical to many and it did to me too at first. Now that we've been doing it for a number of years, I, I don't see any advantage. Our drywall finishes are fine, you know, crown your studs, etc. Okay, back to layout. What I like to do is I order all of my two by four in 16 foot lengths. Then I just manage my cutoffs and scrap as I go. So right there, my wall stops, so I just scribed it up and around on the floor. Again, the beam saw cuts three and three quarters inches deep, so I slightly pull up so I'm not scoring the subfloor. Also, don't forget to finish your cut. <laughs> as soon as the camera goes on, this is the kind of stuff that happens. Now, I clean up. Notice, I leaned those plates. I know roughly I have like, I don't know, maybe five, five and a half foot scrap. I will use those. Some people like to, to put all of their plates scattered and cut and then lay it all out. I like to lay out as I go because I tend to forget something. I'm checking to make sure that the ends are flush. Now what I need to do is I need to find a doorway and I'm gonna go ahead and mark that on all of the plates. And that way, technically speaking, I don't really have top and bottom plates. I just have three plates that all have layout. Identical plates, identical layout. Okay. Twelve foot two. Find the center of your doorway. In this case, it's not even a doorway, it's just an opening. I don't remember how big it is, but I go ahead and I center, I think it's a four foot. So I center two foot on the mark, mark each end, two and or zero and four. Now with my square, because I have inch and a half scribes, now I can mark king stud and trimmers. If you don't know what those are, I'm gonna go ahead and link right above to a basic layout video from this house. I should mention too, this was uh, January and it was quite cold. So I was wearing the True Work bibs and real quick, I got pretty heated. <laughs> I mean, it started out really cold in the shade. Once we got going and the sun came out, even though the temperature didn't really go up, it was time to shed layers. Nice thing about those True Work bibs, and there is a discount code in the description, they've got knee pads built in. The second floor joists will run east-west on the house, whereas the main floor right there, they run north-south. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that all of my studs in those walls will stack directly under the joists. So I was matching the wall there to the left because that wall had been laid out to the big rake wall. Again, it's in the playlist, but I'll put the video up above. Now I can go through with the layout stick and I can mark my two-foot centers. I like to use center marks just because that's the way I was trained. Incidentally, that Bigfoot layout stick, I'll put a link in the description. I have had that exact layout stick since 2006. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a picture right here. Look how much younger I was. <laughs> that was when it was brand new in the fall of 2006. Okay, now you'll find that whenever I'm laying out plates, I tend to wander and just double check and scan because I tend to make mistakes. And so just double check as you go. Remember, one of the top 10 rules for awesome framing and doing other things in life too, 
Rule number 15 is always double check yourself twice. So there's my scrap. Remember I just mentioned that? That was the cutoff from the 16 footers. Now I have the layout coming around my stairway so I can just line them up with the line on the floor. You guessed it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna scribe up and over and then cut it with the saw, the beam saw. So it is being bent over. Honestly, this isn't my favorite thing to do, but pretty idiot proof. If we take the time when we go through and snap our lines on the floor, ah, there's the scrap again. Also, I should have finished the cut. That's just not a big deal, but kind of my tendency to do that. See, there's almost nothing left of those 16 footers. I got three walls laid out with, what is that? Maybe three inches of scrap. Pick it up, cut it with the beam saw. One thing I should mention, that Makita beam saw is lighter than your old skill 77 from years past. They can't finish the cut more on <laughs> I'm gonna blame it that it was cold. Clean up your pieces as you go. That way there's nothing to trip on. Safer, it's just safer. See, nice and clean. Now we're laying out as we go. Ah, but I did not cut it well, and I just want to show you this Makita saw. Again, not sponsored. This is an outstanding saw. Look at that, I just trim off like what, an eighth of an inch? <laughs> oh, Clean up as you go, that. blade down. Even though it's got a blade break, just a good habit to get in. Okay, so let's get into the actual wall framing. As you can see, the sun came out, when the sun comes out in the wintertime, start shedding layers. <laughs> the temperature doesn't have to go up. Oh, here's an old trick somebody taught me many, many, many years ago. Joe Carolla over on the JLC forums used to say, wear dark colors in the winter, and I'm sure you all knew this, because it will absorb what little sun that there is. That was my dad, by the way, visiting for the day, coming out to see how the jobs were going. Kyle and I just split up. He takes that section in the background. I took the section in the foreground. But the dark colors mean you can wear less layers and still stay warm. Also, here's another trick. This one's groundbreaking. The harder you work, the warmer you get. So there's an incentive. Now, I mentioned that we don't overlap and underlap top plates. Part of the reason for that, in fact, where it started was when we started lifting walls with our forklift, we wanted those walls to be as stiff as possible. So we stopped notching our exterior walls but we still overlapped and underlapped our interior walls. Then we realized, why are we doing that if we're already strapping interiors to exteriors? So I'm gonna show you that in detail, and I'm going to be a little snarky about it. The lead up to that is, we anchor our houses to the foundations with anchor bolts cast in place or tightened. And then because of seismic requirements, we have hold downs. So we have straps, which you've seen us install, on the outside of our walls or the outside of our walls to the concrete. So if we're connecting floors of houses to floors below and foundations for seismic or high wind, doesn't it logically follow that we could strap interior walls together when most of those interior walls could be removed structurally? They're just partition walls. You know, things like closets, that kind of thing. So that's our reasoning. So I'm gonna show you how this works. We use the StrongTie CSHP coil strap and we cut it into lengths that allow four nails on each side of the connection. And that strap is designed to work with your pneumatic nailer. That means that when I climb the ladder, I nail it off just like normal, but I bring a strap with me. I'll show you that in just a few minutes. So as you can see kind of here in the background, we're working separate and then whenever there's a wall that's big enough, or even though technically we could lift it alone, we lift it together because, well, we're trying to take care of our bodies. There's no machismo in construction. If you think there is, ask anyone who has aged out. Okay, so there's the strap. I'm gonna show you that in real time here in just a moment. That's how we connect our walls. Now the left-hand wall there is balloon framed, so obviously there is no strap. I don't really need that wall. The floor system's gonna hold that all together. Also, the wall is all nailed together. Okay, in today's episode of Back to Basics with Awesome Framers, I'm gonna teach you how to crown a stud. So see how that bows up across the three and a half inch base? Here, we're gonna make it even more obvious. Look at that, beautiful. So that's not gonna be usable. We're gonna chop that into backing. See how that crowns up? That's what a crown is. <laughs> if it was to bow, 
then that would be that way or that way. See that sweet finger action? Here, let me, let me hold it with my six pack. So the bow would be that way or that way. Crown is up or down as the case might be. So the more you know. There. Just a bunch of inside walls. I mean, really, there's just nothing special here. This wall just is where the stairway goes, so it's the door that goes under the stairs. So again, that was that section of wall that I had just laid out. I'm gonna strap the top. I have a little wall. Anyway, you get the point, you get the point. Now there's only a couple walls left on the back side, so I went ahead and framed that to the left of the balloon framed wall in the great room, just because I had more space. Then I can slide that in. Our goal was just to get all the walls up, locked together, and then we could plumb in line and start framing the floor, but that's gonna be a future video. In fact, I don't think I have any footage of plumbing and lining. I'm gonna try to do that in the next house, but I'll show you how we frame the floor system, because I know some people, they get a little confused with the balloon framing. How do you attach a floor system? Spoilers. You do it the same way you build a deck. <laughs> but I'll get into that in a future video. Okay, so here's the real time of that wall. Yes, I know, I climbed the ladder slowly. I'm gonna just put one nail in it because I want the top plates to line up. And then because that's an outside corner underneath, it's a hallway. Well, you'll see that in just a minute. So here's the strap. Wherever possible, just try to put the strap where framing isn't going to land and let it overhang enough that the inspector can see that there's a strap up there. This is the Simpson Strong Tie CSHP. It's like 60 bucks, 65 bucks, and a roll will last us a couple of houses. Okay, I forgot to do a story, so you guys have to forgive me. So some of you are asking, why do we strap our top plates? basic answer is, is so that I can cut all plates at the exact same time to the exact same length with the beam saw. We never make a mistake with underlaps, overlaps, and for those of you that have to train new people, it's a waste of time to pull nails and have to yank plates. Code requires three nails at the overlap. One, two, three into the four. Stoop doggy dog is knocking at your door. So I got four on each side. We can snip this. It's designed to be used with your pneumatic nailing gun. So we just cut a bunch of these when we climb ladders and nail our plates together as we frame walls. We just nail these at the same time. It is not weaker. If you think that it is, prove it, do a test. Do a test and see if you can yank those walls apart. Can't do it. And I know, cause I've never tried it. Now it's time to nail off the outside corner. Once I nail the tops, the bottoms are nailed, then I nail all the partitions as I go. That way I don't forget something. I can pull, it's just a two by four, it's not difficult. If you've seen in previous videos, we always hold that end stud back slightly. That allows us to fit walls where they fit in between like this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and knock all the gaps out. I'm gonna nail it so it's nice and smooth and that makes the drywallers life easy. Since I'm short, I just put a nail in my Martinez hammer and I can get there toward the top. <laughs> With the hammer, I can go about eight feet, okay? So that's basically it. Thank you everybody for watching. I know this was kind of a brief, short video. Uh, the next house, I plan on getting a whole lot more interior footage. This one, it just didn't lend itself, but that's okay. There's plenty of other great content on this channel, or at least that's what my mom tells me. See you in the next video.